हेलो गाइस वेलकम यू ऑल टू एआई की पाठशाला एंड टुडे इज द सेवेंथ सेशन ऑफ एक्सप्लोरेटरी डेटा एनालिसिस एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस हिस्टोग्राम एंड पीडीएफ एज यू कैन सी डे सेवन हिस्टोग्राम एंड पीडीएफ नाउ टिल नाउ वी हैव सीन टू डी स्कैटर प्लॉट वी हैव सीन टू डी स्कैटर प्लॉट वी हैव ऑल्सो सीन 3D scatter plot, and we realize that we can't do 4D scatter plot. This we can't do. We realize that, but we have seen pair plots. In the last session, I have discussed pair plot. Fine. So one question that must be running in your mind that that. What is one D scatter plot? Because we have not yet discussed one D scatter plot. So let's see how to plot a one D scatter plot. Let's understand the problems associated with problem with plotting a simple one dimensional scatter plots. and how to get around them using ideas like histogram histogram okay. let me erase this there is something wrong with my writing pad let's write. histogram and probability density function pdf its for form is probability density function and also cumulative density function which is called cdf so we will discuss cdf after we will discuss histogram and pdf we will discuss cdf so here what i am going to do first first i am going to write the code you should also type along with me then i am going to explain you the code with the help of the code i will plot a 1d plot probability density function and uh, then i will explain you so let's write a code let me erase this these things fine so let's write a code first <clears throat> first write I is I R I S I is underscore Setusa. You should also type along with me. When I will finish typing, then I will explain you everything. I is underscore Setusa is equal to I is dot lock. Thereafter, take this thing. I is then again take species species. is equal to let's say let's write here uh we have to put one square bracket here also okay no 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 let's write species uh, sorry let's say setosa fine there after let's do one thing let's copy this paste it in the second line here instead of iris setosa i am going to change its name to verzinica let's write iris verzinica thereafter here also let's change the name verzinica verzinica nica one thereafter this is my third line here instead of this setosa i am going to write vertical iris verse c o l o r color let's write here vertical instead of this setosa let's write verse c o l o r color fine this is the first thing that you need to do then you should write plt for plotting plt dot plot plot 
thereafter write this iris setosa thereafter inside this square bracket write petal length p e t a l underscore l e n g t h length and thereafter give it a comma then write n p dot zeros z e r o s zeros underscore like and thereafter write iris setosa iris setosa this setosa and petal length and thereafter that's right here comma o it's right o here and close this square bracket close the bracket i am just going to copy the same line of code paste it here and copy the same line of code and paste it here but i am going to change the name from iris setosa to here change the name from setosa to Verzinica or versicolor versicolor let's change versicolor so here petal length zeros like iris setosa instead of the setosa versicolor will come iris ver c color will come here everything is fine now again in this line of code here from iris setosa to change the name to Virginica. we have not yet tried written Virginica ver z nika and uh, virginica is this no no spelling is wrong v i r virginica v i r g i n i c a virginica petal and iris virginica iris virginica then petal and oh, everything is fine till here thereafter you you need to write oh here also for Genica. Fine. Thereafter, at the end, you have to write plt dot so. I am typing it one by one slowly so that you should type along with me. Now, then I have written these codes. Let's first understand it, then I am going to run it. So, what I am doing here, I am taking this IDS data, which we are discussing from the day one. Iris. So I am taking Iris data frame and I am taking all the points that corresponds to Setosa. I am taking all the points in this Iris data set. I am taking data frame. I am taking all the points that corresponds to Setosa. I am taking all those points and I am putting them in a data frame called Iris Setosa. This is a new data frame called Iris Setosa. In this data frame, Iris Setosa all the uh, iris that belongs to setosa class is there fine similarly here i am creating a data frame called iris virginica and putting all the virginica inside this data frame similarly here what i am doing i am i am again here taking iris versicolor and i am putting all the points of iris versicolor here inside this data frame is versicular. After that, what I'm doing, I'm plotting such that my x axis for is for the setosa flowers. Here, I'm plotting plt dot plot. And first I'm plotting this iris setosa, this data frame, which is having all the setosa flowers inside it. So I'm plotting this and I'm taking this and plotting such that my x axis is my petal length. Sorry, x axis is for the setosa flowers. Fine. And I'm plotting my x axis as a petal length. And my my y axis, I'm putting all the values here. You can see np.0 underscore like. So this is my y axis. And in y axis, I'm putting all the values to zero. Similarly, I am plotting versicolor 
and Verzinica. Petal length on x-axis. And I'm taking all the y-axis to be equal to 0. Now, when I'm running this code, let's see what I'm getting. So I suppose I need to zoom this because it's not properly visible. So let me zoom it. So when I'm running my code, this code, when I run this code, I got this plot. Fine. I have opened it separately here so that it is clearly visible for all of you. Now, let's understand one thing. If you look at this plot, so one thing that you uh, notice that I am missing legend and I am missing axis here. Legend and axis both are missing here. So I will write it down. No issues. My axis x axis is here. Let me write it here. Basically, my x axis is basically my petal length. This is my petal, petal length, PL, and my y axis means nothing here. My y axis means nothing. Because at the time of plotting, I have put my y axis is equal to zero. So you can see all my values are concentrated on zero. So my x axis is petal length. My x axis is petal length. And uh, this is petal length and y axis is nothing. So this is my setosa, we know this is my setosa. Setosa, this orange, this is the virginica. This is my virginica. You know this, this is virginica, virginica, and this is my versicolor. Versicolor. This is my versicolor. Fine. Now, so what is this? All the blue points here is my setosa. All the green points is my versicolor. And all the orange points is my virginica. This is my virginica. Fine. This is blue is setosa. Orange is virginica and green is versicolor. This is clear. So how did we plot them? So we plotted them using the function. But we put one point for each observation. If you see, we have plotted and we have put one point for each of my observations. That we have with this value of petal length. So this corresponds to setosa, this corresponds to virginica, and this corresponds to versicolor. One problem that you immediately notice is at this place, I know there is only one point. At this place, I know there is only one point. At this place also, I know there is one point. At this point also, there is only one point. And I know there are only two points here. If you see here, you notice there are two points. Here also there are two points. Here also there is one point. But what about regions like this? What about regions like this? What about regions like this? Or what about regions like this? These regions. We don't know how many points exist in this, in this region, in this region, in this region. Mm -hmm. Because all the points are overlapping like crazy. So these are crazily overlapping. These points are crazily overlapping. These points are crazily overlapping. So 
we don't know how many points are here. Here we know that there is only one point. Here we also know. Here also we know there are two points. But we don't know how many points are here. How many points are here. So because, see, I plotted the green points. This green point, I plotted this green points after my orange points. So green points are overlapping the orange points. Can you see? These green points are overlapping the orange points. And I don't get to see the orange points that are behind the green points. They are overlapping green points. So some of the orange points are behind the green points, which I am not able to understand or which I am not able to see. So this is basically my 1D scatter plot. So a 1D scatter plot like this is very, very hard to read now. Because one of the big drawback, drawbacks is I don't know how many points are here, how many points are here, how many points are here. Which is very important for me to know. So to determine if there is one point here, to determine if there is one point here, or let's say 10 points here, or let's say 50 points here, whatever be the points. Either one point is here or 10 points is here or 50 points is here. I do, don't know if there are how many points are here. 20 points are there or 30 points is there or one point, uh, 10 points is there. I don't know any one of, one of it. So one way we can modify this plot is take this setosa points here. So one way we can modify this plot is I can do something like this. Very, very, this is a very, very simple thing. Let's say I can write, I can plot as something, plot some something like this. Let's say this, I, I have plotted some, I have made one plot, something like this. And let's say, let's take this set of sub points. Fine. I'm taking this set of sub points only here. And this is a one-dimensional plot. So I am going to plot this in two-dimensional. This is my x-axis and this is my y-axis. So my x-axis is, let's say, petal length. Here also my x-axis was petal length. They count. Fine. Let's take this as count and this is my petal length. So my x-axis is petal length and my y-axis is a con. Now let's assume that this is, let's say, this is my 1 and let's say this is 2. Let's say this is 1 and this is 2. So what I will do here, I will break this reason of 1 and 2 in this graph. I will break this reason of 1 and 2 into uh, smaller buckets or smaller intervals. Let's assume I break it into five intervals. Let's say this is 1.2. This is 1.4. This is 1.6. This is 1.8. So this is 1.2, this is 1.4, this is 1.6, this point is 1.6, this is 1.8 and this is 2. So what I have done, in the in this uh, x-axis, there's two points, 1 and 2, and I have broken these two points into five smaller, smaller intervals. Each interval is having a gap of 0 0.2, 0 0.2, gap of 0.2. So basically, 1, 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, 1 1.8. 1 Do you get it? Now, I have told you my y-axis is basically the count of the number of points that exist in each of the windows. Let's say how many points exist, how many counts of these points are there that I am counting in my 
y axis. So this is basically the cons. Similarly, so let's assume I want to count in each one of these intervals from 1 to 1.2. So 1.2 to 1.3, because this is my one, my setosa flowers, I know my setosa flower lies between one and two. If you can see this plot, I know from this plot, my setosa flowers lie between one and two. So here I have taken two intervals, one and two, and I have broken those intervals into smaller buckets of 0.2 intervals. And here is my quant of the setosa flowers y-axis I have taken as a con. So let's assume, uh, let's assume that between 1 and 1 1.2, there exists two points exist here. Let's assume this is my 2. Let's assume this is a 2. For the time being, let's assume. And then between 1 1.2 and 1 1.4, there are some more points. Y axis now. So between 1.2 and 1.4, let's assume there are four points. Here two points is there. Let's assume here are four points. Fine. So here is my four between 1.2 and 1.4. Now 1.4 to 1.6 between these intervals. Let's assume there are more points. So let's see. There are more points here. Similarly, between these intervals, 1.6 to 1.8. Similarly, between 1.8 to 1.8 uh, to 2. So these are the points which I have marked, which is a count of each one of the intervals. In each one of the intervals, how many points is there? So now this is a variation of my 1D scatter plot. This is basically a variation of my 1D scatter plot because the only variable I have is my petal length and y axis is not my petal width or sepal length. It's basically a count of how many points exist in each one of these intervals, right? So if I just plot it like this, let's say if I just plot it like this, let me take some other color. If I, let's say, just plot it like this. If I just plot these like this. Let's say if I plot it like this. If I plot it like this. If I plot it something like this. Fine. Let's assume it. It's not a proper plot, but. So if I plot it something like this. So you will see the histogram. You will see this kind of histogram. The moment you see the histogram, it makes, makes far more sense than your 1D scatter plot. Because now I can answer the question, how many points are here in this window, in this 1 and 1.2 window? 1.2 to 1.4 window, 1.4 to 1.6 window, 1.6 to 1.8 window, and 1.8 to 1. Uh, to 2 window. So now I can answer this question by seeing this this kind. Go. I am going to write a code for plotting the uh, histogram. So for plotting this thing, histogram. And thereafter, I will explain you. So let's, you should also type along with me what I'm going to write now. So let's come to the next line of, and let's write a code for plotting the histogram. So first I'm going to write for import C born as S E A C B O R N born as S N S. Then, then write import matplotlib matplotlib dot pi plot pi plot as T L T.
re is equal to sns dot facet grid f a c e t grid iris let's write iris here pass iris here and then let's give it the para u parameter let's write species inside this s p e c i e s species comma keep the height i am writing the height keeping the height as five thereafter going to do g dot map m a p map and uh, write s n s dot hist plot h i s t p l o t plot comma then write <coughs> petal underscore length l e n g t h length sorry l e n g t h length thereafter light bins is equal to bins parameter b i n s is equal to let's give it a five and let's write k d e this parameter give it a true t r u this is one piece of code now thereafter okay i need to write something more write g dot add underscore legend thereafter you have to simply write plt dot so fine this is my one type of code and second thing that i need to write here so we do not need to write these two lines i am just copying this code and i will be making few changes here in the same code and let's paste it here fine so what i am going to make changes here simply do one thing facet grid iris is iris is fine u is equal to spaces height is equal to fine g dot mat append sns dot instead of this hist plot i need to write k d e plot p l o t plot here and all these things are Find only one parameter you need to change these things you need to write fill parameter is equal to true here g dot add underscore name field is also fine so these are the two pieces of code that i have written so now first let's run this code and then i am going to explain you both these things so let's run this code first i am getting this kind of plot and then run this code so i am getting this kind of plot can you see fine now let's do one thing when see if you will let me open it it somewhere else so that i can able to explain you better so oh. If you notice here, all my my blue is whatever you see here in blue color is my setosa. Whatever to you see here in orange, this is basically your versi color, and whatever you see in green is basically your virginica. Here you can see the reason it is written setosa, versi color, and virginica. So as soon as you see this, so this tower-like structure. that you see here i just drew a while ago this tower like a structure i have drawn some time ago is exactly what you are seeing in this light blue color or light blue shade right so this tower like structure this is called basically a histogram so here you can see this is a count and this is my petal length so basically in this interval if you take this interval of 1 and 2 so here in this interval small interval the count is like this much in this interval the count is something like this this much count is there below 10 it's something like here you can say 8 is there or something 7 8 values is there here the count is maximum can you see 
in this uh, bucket, the count is maximum something above 25. So this is how a histogram looks. This x-axis is again my petal length. And y-axis is basically a count. Now my y-axis says how many points exist in this small window. Let's say if I will take this window, this small window, or let's say this small window, or let's say this small window, or let's say this small window. So my y-axis is basically counts, counts. So here it is this. So given any points here, the height of this plot of my histogram tells me how many points exist in this small window. And this is far more readable. Now I know by looking at this plot quickly that a lot of Setosa flowers, this lot of my Setosa flowers, actually have a value of, let's assume this is one point, let's assume this is something one, one point. point. 4, 2, 1, 4 point or 1.5 or something if you take this thing this is something if you take a between it it will be something like 1.5 or 1.6 it will be 1.5 or 1.6 so let's assume let's take any assumption let's take this point is like 1.6 so here 1.6 is what we find as the petal length of lot of my setosa flowers Whatever value I will take here, whatever value I am taking here, that will be a length of lot of my set of flowers. Because this is a can count and this is the maximum count. You can see this is the maximum count. So this bucket, in this bucket, if you take some middle value, which comes out to be, let's say 1.6. So that means lot of setosa flowers are having this much count. Similarly, if you look at uh, this, we can, uh, if you look at this, let's say uh, four, this is my four and this is five. So let's say something around 4.5. If you look, if uh, we see that 4.5, let's say this is my 4.5. If you take this point, this will come out to be somewhere around 4.5. So this 4.5, so lot of my, the height is more here. So since the height is more, so lot of my, uh, this versicolor flower is having this much count. Lot of my, uh, because the height is more here, that means the count is maximum. Count is maximum here, here the count is maximum. So lot of my four point in here at this point at 4.5, lot of my versicolor flowers is having this much count. Similarly, if you will come here, so you will see that The height is maximum, let's say at somewhere here around, around this point. So between this, this thing and this thing, somewhere there is some points which will come here, which is having the maximum height. This is like that. Now, let's understand something very important. So, now given, you might wonder, what are these smooth lines which you can see in this plot also this is here you can see a clear separation here this you can see it can you see this a smooth line this a smooth line this a smooth line similarly here also you can see this smooth line this smooth line is not complete here but here you can see this is a complete line so you must be wondering what are these smooth lines are? So let's try to understand what are these smooth lines are. So 
these are smooth lines are basically these smooth lines which you are seeing here is basically probability density function or pdx probability density function so i will explain this terminology let so what it says is simple this blue line if you want to think about this blue line if you it's said ankle, it is basically a smoothed form of your jaggered uh, lines here this is my jaggered lines can you see this is the jaggered line this is the jaggered line this is the jagger so if you will uh, smooth these, these jaggered line and combine these so you will get these kind of smoothed lines if you will uh, combine the center of all the jaggered points you will get this kind of graph you will get these kind of line if you extend it here it will come somewhere here and it will go somewhere similarly this line is also will come something here this line will some uh, will go something like this here this line will go something like this here as you can see in the other plot it's very clear here so these if you combine the peak of all the jaggered points you will get this a smooth line so if you look at this if i join the centers of each of the these buildings let's say these are the building this is one building this is one building this is and if i join the centers of all these buildings and then i i get what i get is this smooth approximation this smooth approximation this line so for example if i take this value if you let's say take this value and if you take this value so this is a smooth form of this histogram so if you take this value and if you take this value there is a difference here you are getting this value and here these these are getting so they differ because this line this deep blue line is a smooth form of this jaggered lines or a smooth from form of this histogram you can say after joining the centers of these histograms so the dark blue line that you see here this this is a dark blue line basically this is a dark blue line dark blue line this dark blue line tells me roughly what is the number of points that i will encounter here so the dark blue line that you see which is also called this pdf is a smooth form of your histogram so we will understand pdfs in more details when we learn statistics and probability but for now just remember that pdf is basically the smooth histogram Fine. PDF is basically my S M double O T H E D smooth histogram. Fine. Now, how do we smooth it? This is something called kernel density estimation. There is something called kernel kernel. There is something called kernel density density estimation estimation so that we will learn slowly as we go on how to do the kernel density estimation when we learn about the gaussian distribution one thing is called gaussian distribution that we will learn in the future session distribution and things like that when we will learn this kernel density estimation and this gaussian distribution so with the help of this kernel uh, uh, density estimation and this gaussian distribution we are able to do this we are able to find this smooth histogram, histogram which is my pdf so this is my future topic which we will learn in the future session fine so So we understand the histograms 
For now, we have understood the histogram. Histograms are nothing, but they represent how many points exist for each value on the x-axis. How many points here, how many points exist for each value on the x-axis. Histogram is basically, x. This, if you see this, histogram is basically my xy plot where on x-axis you have the values corresponding to the variable. Here, this petal length is my variable that you are interested in, which is petal length in this case. And y-axis represents how often or how many times you find a data point corresponding to a given petal length. Looking at this smooth histogram or uh, this PDF, what I can uh, understand that I, this is basically my Setosa as this is my Setosa. So I can quickly understand here that we don't see any Setosa flowers which have with a value greater than two. Here. This is my Setosa with a value. This is my Setosa with a value two. So you cannot find any Setosa which is having a value greater than two. All the setosas is having value less than 2 by looking at the histogram or the PDA. Now let's assume I want to build a model only using petal length. I want to build a model. Let's I want to build a model only by using petal length. Let's assume I want to build a model by using this petal length. So what I can do now? So let's look at this. If I say, if I say, if petal length, let's, let me write it here. If petal length is less than equal to two, then set also. If petal length is less than equal to 2, then Setosa. Because I don't find any Setosa flowers beyond a petal length of 2. Right? So by using a simple 1D scatter plot equivalent called histogram and PDF, by just using this histogram, I can build a model very, very quickly and very, very elegantly. Right? This is how I get my setosa. Now comes the harder problem. Now comes the harder problem. This is fine. Now, what type of rule will I write for my versicolor? This is my versicolor and this is my virginica. And we know that versicolor and virginica are overlapping. So, what type of rule will I write for my versicolor and virginica? That's a hard one because if you see this histogram or before histogram, you can see the your green points. This is my green points and my orange points are overlapping here. In this reason, this is my overlapping reason. Can you see this reason? This is my overlapping reason. In this reason, my green points and my orange points are overlapping. So PDF is basically nothing but it's um, uh, basically what nothing but a smooth form of your histogram, right? So if you see it goes very, very close to what your histogram is. If you see it, if you see it, it goes very, very close to your histogram. Let me take you here. If you see this is going very close to the histogram. This is this line is going very, very close to my histogram. Can you see this line? This histogram. Here is a histogram. No. If you see the PDF of the or the probability density function of the. This is my if you see the probability density function of your versicolor, this versicolor and virginica. 
versicolor and virginica they are overlapping in this region so this is your overlap region this region is the overlap now the question is if i have only petal length if i have only petal length as my only feature how do i write a simple if else condition i could say i will take this value which value let's say uh i will say if petal length let's say i am writing here one condition i am writing here if i will write here if petal length greater than 2 greater than 2 and petal length less than equal to this is my 5 this is my 6 so this is somewhere around let's take 5.5 some value around 5.5 something around that so if i say my petal length is greater than 2 and my petal length is less than equal to and and my petal length is less than equal to 5.5 then my flower is versicolor v e r s i c o l o r this is my versicolor because my versicolor lies between this 2 and this 5.5 that's why I can uh, write this simple if else condition. If PL petal length is greater than 2 and less than equal to 5.5, then my flower is particular. If I do that, what happens is that all these points, so in this reason, in this reason, between, uh, let's say 4.5, this is, let's say 4.5 somewhere, This is let's say 4.5 to 5.5. Let's say this is my 4.5 somewhere. In this region, 4.5 to 5.5, there are bunch of virginica flowers between this region to this region. There are lot of virginica flowers. This green green portion, virginica flowers also, which are going to be declared as versicolor flowers. Although from here let's say from 4.5 to let's say 5.5 here there are points of virginica flowers also which according to this condition which i have written here is also declared as versicolor which is something wrong which i do not want to do so this is something that is uh, not good at all because there are a lot of versi virginica flowers which I have declared as, as my versicolor flower by writing this condition. So I can write, so on the other hand, if you, let's say if on the other hand, if I write my model, something like this, I'm writing, this is my first thing. Let's put it at, this is my second. Let's see, this is my third thing, which I'm writing here. So if I uh, write my model like this, is petal length greater than two, and petal length less than equal to let's say full then versi color now what will happen what i am writing petal length is greater than 2 and petal length is less than equal to 4.5 uh, sorry 4 then versi color if i write this condition so if I'm writing this condition, so what it means? So if I use this as my threshold, threshold means I have to choose some points which uh, will, uh, which I shall take as my threshold to separate these two flowers, versicolor and virginica. So let's say I'm taking this point. Uh, let me erase this and write it once again. So, so let's say this is my 
two. And if let's say this is four, so I am taking this condition right now. If total length is greater than two and less than four, so what I am doing basically, I am considering total length this four as my threshold. This I am taking as my threshold. So if I say petal length is less than equal to four, then versicolor, this is the condition I have written. So these are basically thresholds that I am setting, whether I am setting before it, I have set this 5.5 .5 as my threshold. This is also something that is not uh, good for me. And again, I am setting this four as my threshold. So I know that beyond two, there is no setosa. So this is fine. This There is no conflict in, in that. So there has to be only two, two flowers, versicolor or virginica. And now I'm saying anything that lies in this region, that means two and let's say five. I'm considering these points. Uh, now I'm saying this is my first condition. This is second. This is third. Now let's say now, fourth thing that I'm saying, I'm saying I'm considering this five as my threshold, let's say. So now I'm saying saying anything that lies in this region between two to this five is vertical. If I say something like this, if I say something like this, that's also wrong. That will also be wrong because what happens is that there are a lot of versicolor flowers. Uh, we, there are a lot of versicolor flowers even beyond this point four. There are a lot of versicolor flowers even beyond this point four. So how can I say this? Anything between two, 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 five, uh, two to five is my versicolor. So there are some flowers, uh, there are some virginica flowers beyond uh, between these points also. So this will not coming out to be good. So what I like to say that, so I have to make mistake by setting thresholds at six, four. If I am setting threshold at five, still I'm making some mistake. If I'm set, setting my threshold to this point, still I'm making mistake. So in any way, I am making mistakes. Either I set 4 as my threshold, 5 as my threshold, or this point as my threshold. Every time I am making some mistake. So I have to make mistake. I can't get rid of it, right? So my final model could be something, could look something like this. Let me show you how my final model will, some, will look something like this in which I can make my final model something like that I can do a minimum mistakes. So let's say if the petal length is so, where do I cho choose if my petal length is this, where do I choose my threshold? So what is the right place to choose a threshold? So one gut feel that I have here is what if I choose, let's say this value some value that is close to 5. This is my 5, some value that is close to this value. Let's say this value. What if I choose this value, which is very close to 5? Let's call this value. Let's call this value as 4.7. Let's call this value 4.7. Because this value is very close to 5, right? So if I say, so my, now the next condition that I am going to write, if I say, if petal length PL is less than 4.7 and petal length is greater than, obviously, petal length is greater than 2, petal length is less than 4.7 and petal length is greater than 2, then versicolor. 
then verse C color. This is my fourth condition. Else, Virginica. V I R Virginica. If I write this condition, what will happen? So imagine if I write a simple if else con if an if else condition on this model. Of course, I am going to make mistakes. For certain, I have made no mistakes because all points are less than equal to two. I am going to make no mistakes declaring Setosa flowers as Setosa. But now there is a small problem. Since I have chosen the intersection of these two points, which is my 4.7, like something, this point I have chosen something like this, around below 5, which is 4.7, something there. Choosing the intersection of do, both these probability density functions, this is basically what? This is also my PDF. This is a PDF of my Versicolor and this is a PDF of my Virginica and this is an intersection PDF of my Versicolor and Virginica. So I have chosen this intersection points of both these probability density function as my threshold. So if I am choosing this as my threshold, actually hold threshold, I have chosen this. So you might ask, why did you choose this 4.7? What's the point of choosing this 4.7 4 as my threshold? Why not you have chosen this 4? Why not you have chosen this 5? Or why not you have chosen some other number? Now the reason why I have chosen this 4.7 and not this 5 is, let's assume I get a flower which has a value of 5. Let's assume I get a flower which has a value of this. Let's say this is my 5. Let me take some other color so that it is evident or it is somewhat clear. Let's take a flower which is having this value. Let's, is this visible? It is not visible. So let's take something different. Fine. This is my. So let's assume I get a flower which has a value of 5. Okay. So I picked up a flower from the garden. I and I got this petal length as 5. Now, which of these two has a higher chance of it belonging to? Is it is the Let's say I get a flower from the garden, which has a petal length of 5. Now, we, if a flower is having a petal length of 5, which of these two, that is, is it a chance, whether this flower has a more chance of belonging to Versicolor or Virginica? That I'm, my question is. Now, if you look at this 5 value, what is the chance if you just come here, this is where the point is. This is a PDF of this Versicolor. This is a PDF of Versicolor. And if you just come here, this is basically, this point is a probability of, uh, or PDF of Virginica. So a flower which is having a length of five has a, you can see, higher probability of belonging to Virginica, then it is having a probability belonging to Versicolor. Are you getting my point? So x-axis for probability density, you can think this as chances for the, because you find more points there. I am getting more points here than here, right? So the moment you see 5 here, you can say that, okay, I typically find only a small number of points of Versicolor. I only find a small number of points. If you can take this here, you can also understand this in this way. Let me take you to this graph. If you will come here and uh, if you will come to the this point, it is evident here is better. 
so what you can see i typically find only a small number of points of versicolor type then the virginica type and i find more points of virginica type whenever i see a petal length of 5 whenever i see a petal length of 5 you can understand only by this just go above this and touches this pdf touches this pdf this pdf is having a lesser counts of value this is having a high, lesser higher counts of value this is having a higher probability this is having a lower probability so hence whenever i see a value of i i should declare that point as virginica and not versicolor so whenever I see this point 5, I will simply declare it as virginica and I will not declare it as versicolor because this virginica is a higher ch chance or higher, this point has a higher probability of belonging to versicolor than it has a probability of belonging to virginica. Sorry, uh, virginica then it has a probability of belonging to versicolor. So, because when in my data set of, let's say, I have a data set of 150 points, I find more virginica points with a petal length of 5 and fewer versicolor flowers, uh, which has a petal length of 5, right? So this plot, the orange plot, if you can see like this also, this orange plot, this orange plot, at the point of intersection, if you can see, this orange uh, plot is below the green plot. Can you see this green, this orange plot is below this green plot? Fine. So I give preference to the green points. Because this orange point, uh, orange, uh, this thing is below the green plot. Let's say, so at the intersection points here, why I am taking why uh, taking this intersection points? Because at the intersection points here, none of them wins, right? So for example, if I get a value of let's say 4.5, here is my 4.5, let's say my 4.5 will come somewhere here. So if Let's say I get a value of, let's say 4.5. So here at 4.5, what's happening? I find if you can see here this thing and this thing. So you can, I find more flowers of the type versicolor than of the type virginica. Because this orange plot corresponding to this 4.5, this orange plot corresponding to this 4.5, is above the green plot. Can you see? This orange point corresponding to 4.5 is above my green plot. So I get 4.5. So when I will get this 4.5, I will declare it at it as versicolor. In this case, I will not declare it at virginica because the versicolor is having a higher chance of belonging. Because in my data set, I find more points of versicolor type than of the virginica type. So, one thing that you should know, of course, there will be some errors. I am not saying that we are not going to make errors. We are going to make some errors. But my best gut feel is, since I have seen a lot of flowers which belongs to versicolor, which have a petal length of 4.5, then virginica flowers, I will go and give my decision as versicolor and not virginica. So if you look at that argument, what I have discussed here, if you will look at this argument, let me erase this. So if you will look at that argument, you will see the intersection point will be the best place to set your threshold. 
whatever thing I have discussed here right now. So you will realize this inter point section point will be the best place to set your threshold. And this is also called uh, density plot. You understand this because it is written also because my height here represents how many points exist at each of these intervals. Or it tells me how dense each of these regions, if you, each of these regions is. So this, this, this basically density, this y-axis tells me how dense each of these regions is or each of these intervals is. So since more points exist here, let's say more points exist here. So this is, it tells me, uh, so since more points exist here, so this region is much more denser than, let's say this region, because this region has a less points, or if you take this region or this region, more points exist here. So this region is much denser than this region, right? And hence it is also called density plot. Now we will come to understand what is probability density function. Fine. And uh, a little um, to understand what is probability density function. For now, just you think of it as a smooth form of histogram. Now, having learned that and remember that PDFs and histograms are extremely useful if you want to build models with only one feature, right? And uh, this is a much better visualization of data than your one disk scatter plot. So this is all for the day. So that's all. So this is my final model. If you will understand this thing like this, this so this is my fi final model. If petal length is less than or equal to two, then why? Setosa flowers. If petal length is greater than two and less than 4.7, then versicolor. Otherwise, else virginica. So this is all for the day. It's a uh, long session. I understand your uh, problem. But this is how because I want to make it completely understandable for you guys. That's why I have taken so much of time and efforts to explain you these things. Now that's all for the day. We will meet someday later and uh, we will continue our discussion. Now in the next session, I am going to discuss uh, cumulative density, CDF, cumulative density function and also univariate and multivariate analysis I will discuss. So that's all. Thanks. Take care. Oh, oh, one important thing that we should on that I should let me erase this thing first and uh, let's uh, come to our seat and whatever we have discussed. Let me just uh, commit this code. So what we have discussed today. We have discussed basically 1D scatter plot and PDF. PDF and histogram. Histogram. Okay. Let's commit it. Oh, first let's save this. Let me save this entire thing. Now commit it. Yes. Sync changes. Okay. So this is all for the day. Thanks. Take care. Bye. See you in the next session. Keep learning. Keep smiling.